Hey team, Dr. Jake Audy here, and in the previous video, I jumped into Jamobi, which is a point and click statistical software freely available online. If you haven't seen that video, definitely go back and check it out, because I'm going to assume you've seen it um, jumping into this video. But in this video, I'm gonna jump into R. Now, R is the programming statistical language under the hood of Jamovi. It is an amazing statistical software and if you're planning on doing um, any sort of uh, medical research or a degree or just if you're a regular person I highly recommend learning a computer language and I highly recommend R as a computer language. Some people might disagree with me but if your primary thing is data analysis definitely start with R as a computer language. Now, typically with R, the computer language, we use RStudio, which allows us to type out our statistical instructions on how to uh, orientate, coordinate, and analyze the data. R is used by everyone who's got a large data set, so clinical trials, um, epidemiological studies, uh, sequencing data, uh, meta-analysis, um, even just large research projects. R stats software is used all the time. Ecology loves it as well. Um, so again, I highly recommend learning it. Now, what I'm going to be doing in this video is not engaging R through R Studio, which is a strictly typing out instructional interface. I'm going to be engaging R, the stats language, in through Jamovi. After all, Jamovi runs R underneath its hood. So we're going to pop that hood and use R directly through Jamovi, just because it's a little bit easier. R has a steep learning curve. So if we just dip our toe by learning how to use R in Jamovi, um, it's a nice little warm up to using R fully by um, jumping straight into something like RStudio. If you want to know more about RStudio, I will be releasing more videos on that topic, but also I have a blog at jackorty.com. It's got my research, but also there's a whole tab dedicated to how to do R statistical analyses if you want to check it out. Now, I love R, but uh, uh, I don't want to swamp you, so this is just going to be dipping your toe. Now, why would we use R? So there's a few reasons, right? Well, one is it's free. So um, that's fantastic. Stats software do cost a lot of money, and it means that if you move from workplace to workplace or from university to a workplace, um, you can take R Studio with you because you don't have to rely on the company's license or anything like that. You can just use R, the language. Here's a really important one. You can publish the analysis online. So if you used a point and click stats software like SPSS or GraphPad um, and you published that research online, I can't check what you've done. All I can do is hope that when you said you ran a one-way ANOVA, you pointed and clicked on the correct boxes to run a one-way ANOVA. There's too much trust there. Now with RStudio, because you typed out how you did your statistical analysis, we have transparency and repeatability. And that's what science is all about. I should be able to know exactly what you did, and I should be able to repeat it. And RStudio, because it's a coded language typed out, allows you to do that, which is amazing. And it was invented by a New Zealander. So Cherubro, Kiwi as, sweet as, probably one of New Zealand's greatest inventions ever. One of the inventors was a New Zealander of the two. Um, and that's probably one of New Zealand's biggest impacts on the world. I mean, we gave women the vote first out of any country. Um, we declared to be nuclear free. Uh, Ernest Rutherford uh, discovered the structure of the atom. Blah, blah, blah. New Zealand's amazing. Um, but this is just one of the many amazing things New Zealand has done. Okay, now... A quick point on that repeatability. Here's an interesting paper. It's a paper on deworming Kenyan children. So you remember those helminths that can live in your intestine um, and they can reduce appetite, stunt growth. They can do all sorts of things, induce tiredness, especially when the load is really high. So this study wanted to know what happens when we deworm Kenyan children. Now, what they found was uh, the children started coming to school more often, so they decreased absenteeism, um, uh, and uh, they improved health, they improved participation, and here's an interesting thing, they improved the untreated children as well. They turned up to school more often, and they were healthier as well. In general, it seemed like deworming was one of the best things you could donate your dollar to if you were donating your money to charity. It improved everything, and not just the treated children, but the untreated children as well. How is that possible? Well, um, the theory goes that the worms would re 
release eggs from the infected children and increase the worm burden in the neighboring children. But if you deworm those children, you will decrease the worm burden in the environment and thus the worm burden of neighboring villages. So the idea was that both the dewormed children and the non-dewormed children improved significantly. And it seemed like dollar for dollar, it was a fantastic thing to do. But then what happened was they published their analysis online and they published their coded analysis. Now this allowed people to download the data and perform the analysis and double check that everything that they did made sense. Now what happened was they found errors. Um, and once those errors were corrected, there was little evidence for the previously reported indirect effects of deworming intervention. And so those uh, indirect effects are the effects on the unwormed children. You know, the spreading out benefit of deworming a small group of children affects the neighboring children. That didn't turn out to be statistically significant. This massively in, um, affected the importance of deworming. Don't get me wrong, it's still amazing. But when we're talking about balance benefit, if I have a dollar, should I spend it on a um, anti-malarial bed net or should I spend it on deworming children? Which one's going to introduce the best benefit? Um, it's important that we know these details. Um, and this massively affected the overall benefit of deworming. And we wouldn't have discovered that if the stats program, if the statistical analysis was done with a point and click technique rather than a coding technique. All that's to say, coding is awesome. Um, and this is just one example of how coding is really important for repeatability of research. Right, so let's jump into it. Now, um, if you're wondering how did I get here, I got here. Um, in the previous video, I got all my data set up. And so this is a clinical trial with two treatments, either a placebo or a drug. We measured viral load, we measured oxygen saturation. Um, and over here, we draw a correlation between oxygen satur saturation and viral load. So you can see as viral load increases, oxygen saturation decreases in their blood. And we can also see that if we scroll up, there's a statistically significant effect on treatment on viral load, so drug reduced um, viral load and drug also improved oxygen saturation of the blood, right? So this is made up data. And so obviously I made it positive. Um, but yeah, so that's an analysis using these point and click things. So I went up here to run a t-test, I went up here to run a linear regression. So how do you run our code in Jamovi? Well, over here, there's this button here called modules. So you click on modules and you go to Jamovi library. And this will uh, bring up a bunch of additional extras that you can attach to your Jamovi, which is amazing. There's all sorts of extra functionality you can get out of Jamovi. Now, one of the first things you can do is see this RJ editor, which allows you to run code inside of Jamovi. So if you click install, it will install. I didn't know how long this would take when I started the video, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. There you go, it's not taking that too long. And that will allow us to open it up and run a statistical analysis using our code. And so we're just going to run a couple just to get an idea of what's going on here. Right, so that's now installed over here. We now have a little R box up here. So if I click over there, it opens up um, this little panel here, which is where we can now type our code. Now they've done something very nice here. They've typed out a little bit of code here just to tell us kind of how to use it. Now this is saying summarize the data. We don't really want to do that, so we're going to delete that there, and now we can type in that code. Now what kind of code might we type? Well, let's do a t-test. Now it will actually autofill. You probably just saw that, didn't you? Um, so I can actually um, type that out and click on it and it will autofill. So now it's autofilled the t-test. Now um, I can type out, I can start to type out um, uh, my different column headings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a t-test on viral load modeled by the treatment that they got. So uh, remember, means are just a model, right? So whenever we're doing our code, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this modeled by that, right? So I'm gonna click down here and this is saying, take my data, take the viral load, and now I'm going to hit model by. Now model by is this symbol here. I think it's called a tilde. Um, and it's the squiggly line normally in the top 
It's in the top left of your keyboard there. And that means modeled by. So now I've got viral load. Now if I type out treatment, you can see it can autofill treatment. So this is saying, take my data. That's why that data has turned up there. Take And dollar sign means column. Now we're getting into the thick of coding, right? So dollar sign means code, column. Data means that's the table I want you to get the data from. So it's saying, take the data, take the column, viral load, and model it by the data dollar sign treatment. So model it by the column treatment. Now, if I hit this little play button there, it's actually gonna run that code for me. Now, it's run uh, a two sample t-test. You'll see this word welch here. Um, that's just basically welch is a better t-test. It's a slightly different version of the t-test and it's better. Um, so it's run a welch two sampled t-test there and it's spit out its p-value there. And so now we've run the t-test using code. And what that means is somebody can copy and paste this code and run the exact same test that I ran and get the exact same p-values, right? Which is so important. Now, what else could we run? Well, we could run a linear model. Now to do that, we type in lm. Now, here's the problem, right? What do we want to get from that linear model? Remember, linear model is just the line through the data correlating two continuous variables, right? What do we want from it? And the answer is we want to summarize it. So we go summary, linear model, brackets, and now we're going to do the exact same thing. So data, dollar sign, um, viral load. But this time we're going to model data, dollar sign, oxygen saturation. I should actually swap those around, sorry. Sorry! I'm just swapping that data around. Okay, let me explain this code here for a sec because that's getting pretty intense. Okay, so we've got summary. They're saying I want you to summarize this information. LM stands for linear model. So you need to put a bracket in there, right? Same with this t-test. So summary bracket and this bracket over here is saying summarize what's happening inside these brackets here. Then we've got linear model and linear model is saying run a linear model on what's inside these brackets here. And then over here we've got oxygen saturation, which is the column in the data, modeled by viral load. So now if we hit play here, it's actually going to run both of them. It's going to run the Welch 2 sample t-test up here and there's the p-value there. And it's also going to run the linear model over here. And there's the p-value there, right, for, for your linear model. Now, interestingly, you can copy and paste this to really ease your coding. Um, and you could run a linear model of, um, and we could copy and paste this in here. So what the heck's going to happen if we run a linear model and we're modeling viral load. This time we're modeling viral load by treatment. So remember, if we go back to our data, there's our data here, treatment is not a numerical variable. Um, it is a grouped variable, like placebo versus drug. So if we go back to our analysis here, ooh, I've lost my R code. Oh, you can click on this to get back. Okay, cool. If we go back to our R code, so if you ever need to go back, just double click this uh, button here. It's the same with here. If I want to go look at this linear model here, I'd double click on this and I would go back to it. So here we go. I'm back at my, um, I'm back at my uh, uh, main hub uh, and I'm running my R code. So now I'm going to run a linear model on my viral load versus treatment. Is it going to do it, right? Because I'm running a linear model with a categorical variable. So I can hit play here and now I've got my Welch 2 sample t-test. Um, which is this one. It's going to run all the code, remember? So here's my t-test. Um, now I've got my linear model of oxygen saturation versus um, uh, viral load over here. And we can see that it's statistically significant. And if I scroll down here, we can see it's actually done the linear model for viral load versus treatment. And here's my p-value there. Now the key thing there is um, there's a very obvious reason for that. And that's because, and remember I've told you this, that 
all, virtually all common statistical tests are linear models, right? So when we're typing R code, we almost always just use this. We use this for Anovers, we use this for linear models, you can use this for t-tests. It really doesn't matter because all the statistical tests are just linear models. Now, if you need to understand that, make sure you go back and watch a couple of videos before this one. So um, what you'll typically find is you end up with the same p-value and the same t-value uh, for, um, uh, so we've got negative 23 down here for my t-value, and we've got positive 23 up there. So they're just in different directions, but they are the same magnitude, and that's just depending on how they run it. This one's negative because the slope is down for this one. So um, everything is a linear model. So this is pretty much the code you need to run ANOVAs, t-tests, and linear models. Um, and it's completely valid to run that for all of those because everything is a linear model. Now, I don't want to hit you with too much. Um, so that is the code that I will, uh, I will take through. That's how to run um, essentially um, a Maybe I'll run you through one more. Let me run you through one more, just to prove a point, actually. So instead of L, uh, LM, you can type in AOV. Now, AOV stands for ANOVA, right? So summary, brackets, AOV, brackets, and then viral load modeled by treatment. Now, if I'm actually going to delete the... Oh, no, I'll keep that all there. Now, I'm going to run that all, and now we can see we've got an ANOVA here. Now... The ANOVA has come up with the same p-value as the linear model, which has come up with the same p-value as a t-test. Now, this has only got two groups, and I'm sure many people would say, oh, you can never run an ANOVA on two groups. Of course you can. Why? Because ANOVAs are just linear models, and you can run linear models on um, two groups easy as. So t-test, linear models, and ANOVAs are all the same thing. You'll get the same statistical result out of it because everything, all the basic statistics, is a form of linear models. And if you don't understand that, make sure you go back and check out the videos there. But um, an important point here is we've got the same p-value there. And we should, in fact, see, so this up here is the F statistic for the linear model. This is the F statistic for the ANOVA. And you can see that they are identical. 555.5, 555.5, same p-value, same p-value. Uh, same degrees of freedom, everything is the same because ANOVAs, linear models, and t-tests are all the same thing. Thanks, team.